Hi, this is Jamie Floyd, founding brewer of Ninkasi Brewing. I've always loved comic books. Uh, as a young child, I really read Thor a lot. He was my dude. Then I got older and Batman became really important to me. I don't know, it might have been the only child in me or something. But as I became a college student is when I really dove deep into comics. I'd read all of the Marvel and DC stuff as a kid, but things really started changing in the early 90s. We had Alan Moore write Watchmen and reimagine Swamp Thing and even wrote Killing Joke for Batman, one of the greatest Batman stories. Uh, it was an incredible time in which uh, artists like Frank Miller were redefining what a comic could look like and Grant Morrison was creating these amazing characters and Neil Gaiman was uh, uh, distributing Sandman and, and even that special character Death that he created that I really attached to, got attached to. But there was a swirling around of, of, of art and concepts and the way that comics were done in the early 90s and me and all of my friends swallowed it up. Uh, when I started college is when I really started homebrewing as a hobby and collecting comic books was uh, basically happening at the same time. Uh, you know, when, when we first started, I, at some point or another, it just occurred to me that Ninkasi would make the, the great premise for a comic book. Um, and, and through some early discussions, I met a guy here in the, in, in, in the neighborhood, Dale Esenbacher, who um, was a fantasy artist, uh, still is a fantasy artist, but in the 70s he worked with uh, Franzia and all the greats. And, uh, you know, he, he and I would talk about this stuff, and he even made me a, a bronze casting of Ninkasi herself at one point and did a lot of cool drawings, one of which I even have as a tattoo on my back of, of uh, Ninkasi on the back of Triceratops, which that uh, uh, image gets used or re redesigned, as you will, in, in the future. So one of my best friends in college was Matt Parkinson. We met each other in the creative arts dorm at the University of Oregon. He was such an incredible musician back in the day. He could play bass, keyboards, incredible composition skills. I really admired his connection to music. But ironically, after he graduated from college, he ended up being the VP of marketing for Dark Horse Comics. Uh, he even got to drink my homebrew back in the day. So it's really kind of one of those things that comes together. Over the course of years, we sort of ended up in these dream jobs, and we found, looked for ways to collaborate with each other. I know he always wanted to come to the Great American Beer Festival as a beer lover, uh, but it competes the same week with uh, Comic-Con in New York City, so it hasn't happened yet. Uh, one year for San Diego Comic-Con, they were releasing a comic book for the band Slayer, uh, which our winter seasonal is sort of named after, Slayer. Uh, uh, so we looked for the opportunity of maybe sponsoring a show that they were going to do as a release for their comic. Talk about an amazing event for Comic-Con and everything. But the venue that they were playing at uh, had a contract deal for the beers that they served, and they weren't allowed to serve Slayer. So it just kind of fell through the cracks at that time. Uh, you know, a couple years later, the idea came about to really make the comic book, and that we had this connection to a real comic book uh, company, and that it was in Portland, Oregon, and uh, my friend was a head of marketing, so we approached it that way and, and gave him a call. Working with Dark Horse was amazing. Meg McPherson and Katie Ardo uh, were sort of the managers of the project, and they took us through each of the stage gates and uh, made decision making really easy for us. Uh, we were able to look through a bunch of different artists' works, and uh, when we looked at Eduardo, uh, Eduardo Francisco's work was amazing. His ability to draw animals and monsters was as on point as his ability to draw gods and goddesses, and we really just thought his vision was perfect uh, uh, for what we were looking to do. Jim Gibbons brought the story to life. Uh, as a beer lover and a Pacific Northwesterner himself, he brought layers to the story that I wouldn't have thought of on my own, sort of that forest from the trees sort of approach where there's a lot of little subtleties about beer culture that are in there that I might have overlooked. And so together we were able to bring that story 
uh, together. Uh, Nikos and I were get, would get pretty much weekly updates about what would happen, and we would get, uh, say, sketches of, of, of ideas for, for what things would look like. We'd sort of get on a vibe with that and send it back to him, and he would get cracking on that. The storyboard would advance uh, along and sort of get tighter as we went. You know, you have a 22-page medium that you're working with to tell a whole story, and so it's really incredible to watch that process where you have all of these ideas, and then they need to get distilled down into a journey, if you will, that last 22 pages. Uh, and like I said, that, that email that would come once a week was truly inspiring. It was just sort of this cool thing that would happen in the middle of your week where you'd see this incredible creative process continue to move on. Um, truly a, a dream come true for me to, to see a comic book from start to finish and, and it really triggered a lot of creativity in me. Drinking a delicious beer and reading a comic book go hand in hand literally in the Pacific Northwest. I know when I was first starting in college, both homebrewing and reading comic books were solid hobbies in my life and they tended to be pretty popular hobbies in general at the time. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with our climate. We get a lot of rainy days here. I think we have to kind of dig deep to keep ourselves entertained and to really uh, look into some creative cultural ways to express ourselves. We have amazing farm to table food scene. We have incredible coffee and beer. The Pacific Northwest hosts a, a really high literacy rate with lots of book readers. And also this region has a really strong history of both comic book writers and artists as well as uh, Comic-Con culture in general. The Pacific Northwest has had deep roots in Comic-Con culture for a long time. For the last many years, we sponsored Rose City Comic Con, bringing comic branded beers, art, costumes, and now a comic book to help support comic culture as well as craft beer. Our beer, Dawn of the Red, has a running narrative of a zombie attack on Eugene in which the heroes are out fighting the zombies. It was really exciting to be a speaker at Rose City Comic Con talking about how beer and comic culture blend together. Truly a dream come true. What you can expect from the Rise of Craft is meeting our heroes, the goddess Ninkasi and her familiar Triceratops, set in the medieval times in the city of Eugenia. Ninkasi lives in her own dimension, and when trouble stirs in the brewing universe, she comes out to the prime material plane and finds out what's going on and makes sure that the human sacred ale is free to all those that want it. The goddess Ninkasi is concerned about all things sacred in beer. When humans created civilization, part of it was around the first creation of beer. The mysticism behind the alchemy, the original alchemy of humans to create a recipe for ourselves, is what brought about the goddess of Ninkasi herself. Bringing the goddess Ninkasi and Trice to life is a true joy. The ancient goddess Ninkasi being reignited into the modern world with its roots tied to early civilization is fun, and the emerging characters are really amazing. Alan Moore wrote a comic book called Promethea in which the mere mention of the word Promethea created a goddess. In many ways, this is the same way. There is also another story written by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman called Good Omens, in which gods and goddesses are only real as long as people believe in them. My hope is that these comics create enough creativity and stirring in folks' souls that the goddess Ninkasi really comes to life. The beer names came before the comics. Back when I worked at Steelhead, I made a beer called Hoposaurus Rex. I've always loved dinosaurs, uh, sort of imagination and creativity that comes from that as a kid. I think it goes well as an adult, too. And when we started Ninkasi, you don't bring names with you. So uh, I decided uh, Triceratops would be a fantastic name. And it's actually partially based on an art car for Burning Man called Triceratops. Uh, that was made by a lot of friends of mine, including parts of which were made in our metal shop across the street that we've used for a lot of our projects. And I've spent some great hours on Triceratops cruising around the playa. Uh, with Velocihopter and Megalodon was a continuation of the dinosaur theme for us. And uh, at the time, we were even sort of Jurassic Parking it a little bit. But as the comic book developed, we saw ways for these characters to emerge with a lot more depth and complexity as the narrative continues.
We realized that we could bring more comic book culture to people through the branding of our art. By writing new stories, we can draw new customers to our beers as well as to company culture. For some, this is really cool can art. For others, it unlocks a portal of creativity to think about while drinking a delicious beer. Tricera Hops is 8% alcohol and 84 IBUs. Brewed with Summit, Chinook, Cascade, Centennial, and Palisade hops blended together to create an earthy and floral, delicious expression of a classic double IPA. Velocihopter is 6.6% alcohol and 50 IBUs, sporting a juicy mouthfeel and a touch of honey malt, featuring the complex hop flavors of melon, papaya, and orange, featuring some of the new world hops like Lotus and Brew One. Megalodom Legendary IPA is 10% alcohol and 70 IBUs. This is a bold beer, yet balanced, with a sweet and slightly smooth finish. Creativity abounds at Ninkasi. We're in the process of filming several videos about the beers coming out that will help fill in some of the pieces of the Ninkasi universe. I'm also doing in a panel interview with the author Jim Gibbons coming up soon and I've also plotted out most of book two which will be the origin story of how Ninkasi and Triceratops met and will introduce the characters Megalodom as well as the Velocihopters. Uh, super excited about all the fun on that side of things. What we're hoping for is that people love these books enough that we can continue to do them. Uh, Nikos and I love Star Wars and so originally we thought of this as a trilogy but already this has taken a life of its own through multimedias and we're excited to see where this journey continues.